Well hello and welcome to another video. This one's going to start a little bit differently than what I normally would do. Normally I would be out in the countryside where I'm camping. Well I've been out, I've been to the Pyrenees Ranges and I've got back and I've uploaded all my video to my tablet to do the editing and I found out that the footage that I got with this little Osmo Pocket which I'm recording on now had either very low or near no sound on it so pretty much all the video that I've got with this little camera is null and void it's just not going to work so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and make a video out of the other footage I've got which is from my GoPro and uh, I didn't have any big camera with either I for whatever reason left that sitting on the uh, lounge room floor I have no idea what happened there but anyway I'm going to see if I can put together a video because I did do a lot of videoing in Moonabell and in the campground Cameron's Track campground so anyway um, we'll get into it and we'll see what we can um, make up and um, we'll see how it goes So, I've got about four or five k's up the road and I've just come across a uh, lookout that's not far off so I'm going to go and have a quick look at that. And like I said, a short walk and uh, there's a little tower here, climb up. And that's the view from the top, looking east towards Ballarat and down south there is the Warbra wind farm and I believe I've got to head back up in that way somewhere so. Well, so I've come out of Avoca onto the number two creek road now I'm on what they call Main Break Road. Um, yeah, this is quite easy to get in. I would believe you'd get in in a two-wheel drive with probably a camp patrol. I don't know about a caravan. Some steep sections there that might test you out, but uh, if, especially if you're a front-wheel drive. But and there we go, Cameron Track Campsite, 200 metres. So it is school holidays now, but Easter's in the middle of it. So I'm on a Tuesday, so hopefully the campsite is uh, quite vacant. I can imagine over Easter it could be quite full. Got one. No, that's not one. That's the actual um, hut. Yeah, by the look of it, I've got it to myself. Beautiful. This is the Cameron Track Campground. It's got a nice brick shelter there, so if you're pushed for it, you could probably camp out under that. And there's a pit toilet over there. A few campsites down along there, maybe. But uh, I'm going to put mine right in on that grassed area there because there's a fire pit there that I can use and uh, the breeze will be coming from that way going that way so it'll blow the smoke away from the fire and i didn't know it but uh, there's also a luxury too i might not have to use too much of my uh, tank water there's a there's a tank full of water here so that'll be good anyway i'll get set up and uh, we'll go from there So there's camp all set up, got a quite a nice view across through the gap in the trees to the other ridge. Oh, I don't think I'm going to get a good sunset though, I think it's going to be behind those trees but anyway, probably not a big campground, 
I wouldn't think you'd fit a lot of people in here. And the level spots are around the shelter. There's a spot in there that you could fit a couple of caravans if you knew each other. And this here is the track that goes around the uh, bottom of the campground, but really the track is about it. There's no real campsites. I mean, you could probably put a tent up there, but certainly in this spot here, maybe a tent along this spot here. But it's probably about five or six groups would be about a bit, the max. Um, I suppose if it was really bad weather, you could camp in the hut up there. But I love it. Yeah, really nice. Oh, hang on. Oh no, sorry. I thought it was a bush shelter down there, but it's just a, uh, it's just a big burnt out tree. And here is the pit toilet. It's a new structure. Looks pretty good. Yep, even got toilet paper. And for once, it hasn't had the sh shit shot out of it. I'm in Munambel, Munambel, and I'm just reading about the history. So, across the road there, right there, is this tree that uh, Malvina Richardson brought from uh, America when she migrated out here in 1855. She uh, was quite a woman. She had a... Um, she did the 2,000 mile covered wagon trail crossing of the American West. Came out here with a second husband. He died here. She married again. And she uh, became a midwife at the local hospital and died in 1909. And there we go. That's the tree she bought from America. And planted here. And just to clarify, it's called a Judas tree. And, um... Here's the old shops, long since shut, although it's funny, it's still got the uh, FOS symbol there, so I don't know what kind of shop it was. Moonabell was um, settled um, mostly because of gold, came in here in the 1850s, and uh, when that faded, I suppose the uh, local farmers would have kept the thing going, but as time goes by, these places become sort of 
derelict or deserted there's not a lot left here now there's a uh, store up here the Moonabell store which is still open businesses for sale and the old pub up there that they were converted into what they call the Moonam, Moonabell Resort there is a lot of wineries around here I'm going to actually go visit one and grab myself a nice bottle of red for this afternoon. But anyway, I used to come through here all the time once. Um, when I used to drive back from Ballarat to my parents' place in Matoa. And I used to stop at that general store quite often. There's an old business would have been over there too. Okay. It was called Dickerson's Produce Store, 1859. And uh, just going by what it says here, the gold mining town had 35,000 people in the 1860. Built of bricks from the Moonabell Brickworks, from local clay, it functioned over the years as a produce store, general store and saddlery. So I just took a quick drive around the streets. There's not a lot of them in... Uh, in a bell and uh, it's quite interesting this that is St Paul's Anglican Church on the left hand side is the Uniting Church and on the right hand side is the Catholic Church so there's these three churches all beside each other um, I suppose they were competing for the patronage but uh, yeah imagine if all the services were at 10 o'clock in the morning there would have been quite a lot of singing going on they do say that that one there has a service every first sunday at 1 p.m be interesting to see whether that is true because most small town country churches have pretty much closed so here's a unique little thing the moonabell public sundial so it works that you put your foot, your right foot, on the month, which is April. So I put my foot there. And then you raise your arm vertically like that, and it'll show the time. And in this case, it's between 10 and 11. It's smack bang on. It's 10.30 according to my watch. <laughs> and here we are at the site of the Moonabell Lockup. So according to this, there was two lockups, one at Red Bank, one at Moonabell, for the 30,000 population from the gold rush. There's a lockup building. There's a little bit of artwork in there as well. And if you go over to these boards over here, you see all the people that were locked up in here and charged. I'm not going to go through them all because there's just far too many but mostly it was drunk and disorderly stealing vagrancy look there's one wife desertion house breaking and stealing child desertion yeah desertion deserted his wife didn't know that was a chargeable offense but anyway mostly drunk and disorderly there you go, there's a kangaroo hopping through the schoolyard there. Look at that. Only in Australia, countryside. He's going like hammer and tong. And here is the Moonabell Hotel. Now the Moonabell Resort. Ran continuously since its opening in 1861. Pub only opens up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm not going to hang around that long to get a beer, so I'm going to head over to a uh, place and have do some wine tasting and get myself a nice bottle of red for tonight. So that's a bit of a tour of um, Moonabell. Sleepy little country town just out of Avoca. I'm back at camp now and I'm enjoying my Nice wine, Summerfield Pyrenees Tradition 2018. Absolutely lovely drop.
So there we go. I, I think I've managed to piece together quite a good video. It would have been a shame to lose all the footage I had of um, Moonabell and uh, Cameron's Track Campground. But it could have been better. But anyway, um, probably not my best video, but still pretty good. That could be uh, it for a video for a while for me because um, I might put out a video on uh, some trailer add-ons in the next week or two. But... As for camping, um, I'm in the middle of uh, moving, so we're packing boxes like crazy as we have the removalists arriving on the 26th of April, and we go across to Tasmania on the 3rd, and then it's a mad unpack, and I've got to come back to Victoria, so it could be mid-May before I get out again. So anyway, we'll uh, see you then. So that's it for this video. If you like this channel, consider subscribing to it, and I'll see you in the next one.